So what is diabetes? Uh, we have a classification of diabetes into type 1, type 2. There is gestational diabetes and there are specific types. So type 1 diabetes are mostly because of B cell destruction. This is only found in younger uh, kids. It's and during uh, from their birth itself. And it can lead to insulin insufficiency or a deficiency. So their pancreas are incapable of producing insulin, which will help them in metabolism of glucose, absorption and metabolism. So type 2 diabetes is a progressive loss of insulin secretion. Not all the pancreas function is lost, but a certain quantity of insulin is secreted by the natural pancreas and the rest quantity has to be taken by the individual in the form of oral hypoglycemic drugs or else in the form of insulin, which is injectable, IV. So this type 2 diabetes is usually because of uh, irregular lifestyle and uh, diet, uh, not following a proper diet. So uh, we'll deal with the recommendations based on this as well. So gestational diabetes, which is uh, defined by their, its name itself, which it says that during the second or the third trimester of a pregnant lady, they can uh, develop diabetes just because of family history or their genetic decomposition and as well as because of their diet and lifestyle habits which they led before uh, acquiring the pregnancy. So there are other specific types of diabetes which we can see in mostly hospitals which are monogenic diabetic symptoms. Okay, There are plenty of diabetic symptoms which you are aware of, but then there's a monogenic diabetic syndrome. Then disease of the endocrine pancreas, such as cystic fibrosis or PCOD, PCOS, which can lead to impaired glucose intolerance, or it can lead to insulin sensitivity, a reduced insulin sensitivity. And it can also lead uh, cause a high glucose levels with the help of drugs or chemicals. There are certain drugs which are compulsorily used by patients in the hospital setting like steroids that can indirectly influence the increase in the sugars in the blood. It can lead to metabolism and thereby the patient who is on steroids will have to have these diabetic medications which I mentioned before. So there are certain glucocorticoids, like, like I said, steroids, and they are also used in many different organ transplant as well as in the treatment of adverse conditions like HIV or AIDS. Now coming to lifestyle management, energy balance, a modest weight loss achievable by the combination of both reduction in the calorie intake and the lifestyle modification we have seen through previous research mentioned before that benefits overweight and obese adults as well as in those who in type 2 diabetes and also those in pre-diabetes. Now intervention programs to facilitate this pro, uh, pro, uh, progress process is recommended. This means that they should join certain gyms, certain programs, group facilities or we should follow up on them on a very regular basis so that not only on their diets but also their lifestyles or the change in the lifestyle in, by implementing exercises and activity. Uh, eating pattern and macronutrient distribution as there is no single ideal dietary distribution of carbohydrates or calories uh, in a particular diet as well as fats. Okay, uh, A kid with type 1 diabetes might go to school, will have a mid, uh, mid break we need to supply him with some small quantity of carbohydrates because he will go for some activity, PT or something like that. So he needs a sustained energy after his breakfast, which he has at home. So that we need to calculate. We need to calculate that by the time he reaches home, probably late at around five o'clock or you know later uh, in the evening after his tuition, he need to have a snack after his lunch or a lunch itself should be sufficient in carbohydrate that the insulin uh, requirement should not be uh, there during his uh, timing in the uh, school itself. He himself might administer himself insulin, but then he needs to be trained. He needs to have experience that will be acquired only with age, with type 1 diabetes. 
but it can be also taught to the teacher over there but then our role is to make sure that he sustains his energy he sustains his glycemic control does not require that much an emergency situation of insulin till the time he reaches home okay so that uh, such young kids can manage with their diets itself now the energy balance overweight or obesity we need to make sure that the weight loss is recommended for all those individuals who are at a risk of diabetes the only uh, good thing is to prevent anything than to cure it so we need to focus on people who are overweight or obese check their um, you know hba1c making sure that they don't fall into the impaired glucose tolerance range or in the pre diabetic range okay and implement all these factors so that they don't land up into diabetes within a year or a few months now the physical activity and behavior modifications are important components of the weight loss program and are helpful in maintenance of the weight which was already lost okay we have seen this proven through researches up